the history of the traditional text. Some of you may refer to that as the received text. I have no problem with that. Uh, some refer to it as the textus receptus, which is just simply Latin for received text. Some abbreviate the term textus receptus to the initials TR. They all refer to the same thing. The, the term that I prefer is the traditional text because it far predates the time when somebody came up with the, the, the term or the name received text. It does not take a rocket scientist to deduce that if an early translation is parallel to and synchronous with the traditional text, that it was translated from the traditional text. In the year 150 AD, the Syrian churches, of which I believe the church in Antioch was the leader, it certainly was in the Apostle Paul's day, and this is not that much longer or later. The Syrian churches produced a translation of the New Testament that is called the Peshitta translation. It's an Assyrian word, which means uh, the basic translation of the New Testament. It follows the traditional text. Therefore, it is apparent that it was translated from the traditional text. In the year 157, A.D., a group in northern Italy known as the Italic Church or the Italic Church produced a, a, a translation, I think, in collaboration and cooperation with the churches of Syria, and it was called the Italic Translation. It was a form of Old Latin. It likewise follows all the characteristics of the traditional text and, and quite apparently and obviously was translated from the traditional text. A missionary in Central Europe by the name of Ufalus produced a translation of the New Testament which has been known ever since as the Gothic translation. It was produced in the year um, 350 AD. It likewise followed the traditional text. And what's significant about that is that a missionary on the field without the access to uh, uh, libraries and, and, and reference works that someone might have if, say, they were living in Alexandria or in Rome. But a missionary out on the field with limited resources is translating the New Testament into a, a vernacular or a local language, and it follows the traditional text, folks. That, that, that's pretty clear evidence. That was the conventional, basic, standard, accepted, received Word of God of that day and of that era. That's powerful evidence. That may not be manuscript evidence, but it's powerful evidence. The Greek uh, church produced literally thousands of copies of that traditional text. It was called the Byzantine text because the eastern half of the, the Roman Empire was, was called the Byzantine Empire. There are approximately 6,000 manuscripts available today, the technical word is extant, that means existing, of which about 99% support the traditional text. That's amazing. And the simple truth is that the transmission and translation of the New Testament in the first 1,500 years, first to 1,800 years of Christianity was basically all based on the traditional text, of which the King James Bible is the the English language manifestation.